Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $15 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leaning managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a like. Clayton here from XY Advisor. Now, I think this is the first time we've had someone come back three times. Now, we have had someone come back two times, a handful of times now, but you're still breaking new ground. Paul Mann, CEO of WSA. How's it going, mate? Yeah, great, Clayton. Thanks, mate. Uh, back for the third time. Am Woo! I the first? You yes. are. Yes. Happy days. Do I, <laughs> do I get something for that? There's a medal? You do. Behind, get a medal. behind the third door is a new Kia. <laughs> there's, no, there's only one door. There's only one door. There's only one door. There's, exactly. one door. <laughs> there's um, no car. <laughs> Fantastic to be back here uh, talking to you, mate, and uh, and the XY crew. Um, yeah. Firstly, congratulations on the new platform, mate. Uh, Thank you. I signed up last week. Um, a great improvement, and I think uh, we're all sick of Facebook and all the crap on that, oh, mate. Man. So I'm loving that you just go on. And you there's don't no have to crap. worry about anything else. There's no ads. There's no... Well, the ads aren't coming, are they? Well, well I mean, it's definitely... Well, ultimately, X, Y, the, the business good, model is, uh, is advertising. But we'll, we'll have to do it respectfully. No, look, congratulations to you guys. That's, uh, that's a great uh, step forward. And Thanks, uh, yeah, you know, big supporter, as you know. And um, look... Onwards and upwards, mate. Because uh, you know it, we need some bright lights in this world right now. One hundred percent. No, it's, it, you're, you're, you're exactly right. And it reminds me, uh, as as you mentioned that, it reminds me of uh, many years ago when uh, when we originally met through the AFA uh, mentoring program. Uh, big fan of it. And um, and you sort of looked at me one day and you said, Clayton, you're either a, a, an advisor or an entrepreneur, and you need to figure out which one. And, and you said, look, I don't know what this XY thing is, but uh, if you're going to pursue it, you, sh- you should. And, mate, uh, all these years later, it's, uh, it's, it's you know, it's, it's done well. Obviously, we're, we're a large team that, that up until very recently didn't need to get paid. So <laughs> the you've got to eat, mate. You've got to eat. <laughs> exactly. So after five years, I've finally come on full time. And... Um, but the advantages of, of having a team that's passionate about what we're doing uh, and, and not requiring an income, is, you know, it's amazing what you can get done on a tiny budget. But Well, pa- passion is the uh, underrated and under, under, undersung uh, hero of any business. And uh, unless you're passionate about what you do, what are you doing? I think that was part of my advice in the past to you as well. Absolutely. Um, Unless you love what you do, mm. it's, it's a chore, you know, and yeah. it, it, is, it is hard. You know, it's called work. It's not called fun, but if you can turn it into fun and make it something that's challenging and along the way, and you know, and, and that's why I think the best advisors are the ones that are they're involved and passionate and out there doing things. Um, yeah, because they're, they're passionate about what they do. They're passionate about their clients. Yeah, and advisors have that advantage, right? Like well, uh, the good advisors. I mean, and look, yeah. let's be honest. There's been advisors in the past that totally. haven't been passionate about what they yeah. do. They go through the motions and. Yeah. Um, and you know, look, there's there's a multitude of things that have, have gone in the past that uh, have got us to where we are now. And uh, you know, if you're not passionate, then go and do something else. Oh, 100 percent. And advice, we need passionate, good people in this industry. Absolutely. And uh, I I get the privilege of interviewing a lot of them, and truly, they're like. A lot of people are very passionate about financial advice. In fact, I still am, even though I'm not an advisor anymore. Like, it's such a cool um, you job get description. But you get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, and that's the thing. Not everyone gets financial advice. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's hard. It's a little bit hard to well, explain. Is it? it? Yeah, because you got. Should we have a go? Well, that, that'll be a challenge for <laughs> us. Right. Can we explain what financial advice is? Okay, cool. Well, this I've only been one for twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to test. <laughs> Put me on the spot. So I think it is giving advice around financial matters, but and and, and that sounds very yeah. simple, but it's much more than let's talk uh, superannuation insurance uh, investments. It's anything to do with money. So every time you need to pull out your wallet. 
if an advisor hasn't played a role in the way that you think about it, giving you frameworks to easily understand and engage with your money, then they haven't done their potentially what so, they could have done. So how about so you're helping people achieve their life goals? Yes, from a financial point of view. Yes, yeah, and yeah, because and, and, and guiding them how to put a to be a plus b yeah. equals yeah, c. Well, money, right? money, money choices are life choices. Yes, yes. Money choices are life choices, and life choices are money choices, and and they both go together. And so I feel like if you, you, you definitely the goal is to help people with their money decisions, but. I, it just has such a, uh, which is why when I wrote that book a few years ago, Fund Your Ideal Lifestyle, although it's a little bit ambitious and I'm not entire, like it was a little bit hubris, I think, the, the title, but it sort of did. No, no, don't. <laughs> no, Clayton, don't. I've but, read an, wasn't there another book named that one as well? Exactly. Oh, yeah, Ben Nash. <laughs> Good one, Ben. <laughs> Mate, so, uh, so. We're, there's a lot going on, obviously, in financial advice, and you, you tend to have a very good sort of macro view over a lot of it, and I really enjoy our conversations. FASI is going on, but also you had your AGM yesterday, so I'd like to dip into both of those. Which one would you like to start at? Oh, well, they're all interconnected, really. The whole, the whole financial advice world, you know, last time, I can't remember the last one. It was probably it was about a year, year ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably more, Yeah, actually. Um, yeah. And at that time, we were thinking, oh, when's this going to calm down? And... It still hasn't, right? No, it's um, just gotten... So, worse. face, yeah. I mean, look, it's really government and, and regular, regulator, regulatory intervention in uh, a, um, an industry without any uh, conversations with the industry. Yeah, it's weird. That's eh? what's happening right now, yeah, right? We're being weird. told what to do by ASIC, APRA, uh, FASIA, who... I don't know, there was a great email from Dante DeGori uh, out to the membership, the FPA, this week. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and it, it, the, he didn't miss them. And, and Phil Anderson, Phil Keon from the AFA also sent, uh, have, have been talking about this a lot yes. um, after the dissolution of the uh, bipartisan group that was getting together to actually be an industry code monitoring body run by the industry, you know. Yeah. Talk to people who actually know what they're talking about as opposed to other areas. Um, and so the upshot was, you know, is this board meant, you know, Fazia, are they trying to rewrite the law? Uh, it seems it, that way. It, it, it will, the, the code, and I've actually got a copy here because I printed it off the other day just to try and get my head around it and some of it, oh my God. Um, but it's, it's actually created things well beyond what the law actually says. So it's actually in conflict it's trying to, it's trying to reduce uh, conflicts of interest, but it itself it seems to be in con- conflict. So well, it does it's, conflict it's, with other other laws and other regulations. And, and so there's a lot of issues. But you know, as Dante said, he, I think to, to sort of paraphrase him, it was more about, you know, are they trying to create a a, 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 a new university here? I mean, it, it was more about uh, academic yep. um, uh, rigor than actually trying to establish a framework to bring advisors through. So remember, that's what this is. This is the future. It's yeah. bringing new advisors into our industry in a, in a really solid pathway yes. to build that profession over time from, yes. A, yes. from, a, from a, a professional designation point of view. Which right? everyone's a fan of. Oh, well, well absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Like, and we've all tried to do that over the years, yes. you know, and, and created that in different ways ourselves and it's changed i mean like i said i've been an advisor for 20 years and i've been through all manner of changes and i, I just think that the major failing here is that no one is consulting with the industry at a meaningful level you know yeah. and there's just so much muckraking and people throwing our industry bodies under the bus and yeah. you know, saying well you know there's there's all those other area other associations coming out and look, being the CEO of a very small association, I understand that. Sometimes you do get frustrated. However, the way I feel is the best way is to actually go and talk to these people. Go and talk to, to Phil Kewan. Go and talk to Phil Anderson. Go and talk to Dante. I met with Dante a couple of weeks ago yeah. to talk about what we do and what they do and trying to fit it in. Yeah, and I, I think they cop a lot of flack. For, I, I think they've got an impossibly difficult job where they're trying to manage thousands of individual business models at the same time while trying to uh, do well, what the government wants. And the more they fight the government, the less power well, that they well, get. They're caught in the middle. 
It right? sucks, yeah. And, and I don't know if you've ever tried to get in front of a politician. No, never. Right. Uh, it's not oh, easy. Actually, we're starting to. We're starting to. It's not easy, right? It's, oh, and And yes. getting them to... There, there's a few out there that are listening and they're actually, uh, you know, on on the on the bus, so to speak, you know, in in terms of just trying to um, re rebuild advice because Australians need advice. Every single person, I, I speak, I wear many hats, Clayton, as you know. Yes, and we can talk about those as we go. But every single body or product provider, industry super, you know, retail super, insurance, you name it, you know, indiv- you name it. Every single one of them in every meeting I say says that their members, their clients, their, their whatever you, they call them, are better off in the long term once they have advice. Well, of course. Right. Every single one of them. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, Australian super or, so I'll go A to Z, Australian super to Zupa, right? <laughs> A to Z, nice. So, yeah. you know, Australia's largest to probably one of Australia's <laughs> smallest yeah. super funds. And I've spoken to all the CEOs of everything in between. Yes. They all say, oh, we need, our clients, our, ma- our members need advice. 100%. But not one of them is really facilitating that well. Yeah, I know. I feel like it's something that everyone is waiting on the industry to solve. And I live in... A no, 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 they're not. You don't reckon? Well, uh, Fazy is trying to solve it. Well, that's this what is the I mean. problem, no, right? No, 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 the no. industry will solve it. We are solving it. Oh, but here's the thing. It just... I, I feel like they were, and then we just didn't nail it. And so the, the, it got taken from our hands. Well, and to go back to the associations, they're caught in the middle because what happens is they build up relationships with government ministers, you know, and, and they get advocates in there. So they've got, you know, PR firms and, and, and consulting firms that help them, you know, pitch to politicians in the right way. Yeah. However, those politicians don't listen. All the time. Mm. Uh, And they've got different hats and they've got different... And they've got different trajectories as well and and different ambitions. Like, uh, uh, there's people in positions right now who I'm sure that's not where they want to be. They they want to go to higher office or... So, their mandate when they come in or their mantra is, I don't want to mess this up. So, I'm probably just going to keep the status quo. Yeah, that's a whole thing that I don't understand. That whole, uh, you know just trying to protect your ass and hold the fort while before you get well you're voted voted elsewhere you're a voted you're a voted um individual who well you know you voted in you it's a very short lifespan politics is weird like that it is you know and you've got guys who've been there for 25 years who you know have safe seats and all that sort of thing but then there's people smart people in there i mean these aren't yeah, they, these are smart people and, and ambitious people and, and good people. However, their their mandate is, I've just got to get to the next election. And and I don't know I was watching you know Koshi and whatever this morning, and they were talking about water shortages, you know, and, and yeah, yeah, you know, and and uh, Jeff Kennett was on there saying, for the last fifty years, no one, no politician has really had a long term view on water strategy in Australia, which is probably one of the biggest issues we face. It's so right? weird, hey. Well, we can lay pipes, and, and look, the, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a financial advisor, talk to me about shares and I'll know everything, sure. talk to me about water, look, I don't know, and, and this, this is a very simplistic <laughs> view, so please, anyone out there, don't, don't have a go at me here, but we can lay pipes for oil from one end of this country to the other, we can lay train tracks, we can lay gas piping from one end to the other, uh, you know, you've seen the infrastructure views of, of some of those major, I mean, yeah. Fortescue Metals, I mean, he, he basically built that out of nothing, train track. Can we not lie, lay some pipe there, you know, in terms of water, water, water to, to those dams, just funneling oh, no. those in, like there must be some sort of strategy, but there doesn't seem to be any long-term thinking yeah it's crazy around that so how is there going to be long-term thinking about the future of financial advice which in the scheme of things is is minor goodness gracious you bring up a very good point hey um who wrote facia i don't even know do you know well there's a board there's a board okay do we know who's on the board uh look we can probably google that yeah okay. I, I think they're keeping their heads down my understanding is there it's mainly academics Okay, and so don't, who, yeah. who, 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 got, who, got, 
Who nominated this? Board? There was there was a process. I mean, it's okay. it's government and ASIC and, right. and put it together to to do that. I feel um, like I should know the answer to these questions. Yeah, look, I I have looked at it, uh, but with a lot of things, sometimes you go, look, I've got other things that are more, oh, no, more 100%, important. So hundred percent, yeah. Well, let's talk about standard yeah. standard three. So standard three is the which you, you've you've obviously shall, shall we shall we. <laughs> Shall we get a, a, a <laughs> printed copy? Well, right? I actually got a copy in my in my notebook for some so, reason. So standard three is everywhere at the moment, um, and my understanding is that uh, it it can't have like it's restricting all conflicts. So essentially, um, essentially you you can't earn even insurance commissions. Yeah, it's sort of mentioned in there, isn't it? Mm. And and I don't. And again, that's that's a big deal. It's a massive deal. That's, that's, that's uh, yeah. So, so and and do risk advisors just split off now? Like, is, is do we need to just draw a line in the sand and well, say what we'll go we'll go back thirty years? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, so you it, talk to me about being a risk advisor, and I'll talk to you about being an investment advisor, and you know, really, they belong together. Of course, they belong together, but like it's, it, it's it, kind of weird to put riskies under the same requirements as uh you know someone that deals with trusts like there's different levels that they provide very different services and i feel like if so, so was, how, do the, how do the i know what you're saying how do the accounting profession do it where you have specialists and, and you know totally. what they're meant to be doing right yeah. but you're all uh, are licensed so to speak under under an overarching it's the same in law Right. I mean, you so get you're a specialist. Yes. We go to a doctor. You don't. You get referred to one to the other. Right. Absolutely. It just seems common sense. We should have specialists that have different requirements, and then if we educate the, like, if if the public knew, I I, I I shudder at the words educate the public, but if the public simply knew that if they go see a risk specialist, they're going to buy insurance, and then that risk specialist is going to receive commissions. There's no funny business. Yeah, but that's where this all went wrong. You know, this is where um, it, when the banks started buying advice and, and you know buying advising firms and building building advice channels, um, then they started to say, "Well, hang on, well, really, you went to a Westpac, and I'm not. I'm just pulling names out of a hat. You went to a Westpac advisor. Sensibly, you would have thought that you were getting Westpac products. One hundred percent. That's and that's." No one has a problem with that, right? Hundred percent. If you went to an AMP advisor, you've got AMP. That's what used to happen, right? However, the the industry started to convolute itself by trying to grow and change, and you know they couldn't just leave well enough alone, I suppose, and mm-hmm. start saying, well, okay, well, let's call it something different. Let's not call it AMP. Let's call it whatever. <laughs> Actually, it could be controversial here. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing, you know. You, and and oh, you don't just get AMP products in here. You get everything here so you know yeah. this is the, the birth of the platform and all these sorts of situations which all of a sudden confused everyone mm. and made it a bit murky so you didn't what so i'm going to an amp if i was i'm not getting amp or am i getting amp am i going to westpac I mean, all these whoever it was yeah what were, were what were you getting you were getting a product and that was the problem right yes and you were getting that was the problem you were getting a product yeah were you going to an advisor for strategy? And that's where I believe the, the future of advice is. Um, you know, and, and my personal business, um, True Direction Financial, is product agnostic. We absolutely say that. And it's about strategy. And, you know, Kath and I have even seriously talked about how we, you know, and, and we, we do this without um, formally... Uh, structuring it for a client but we come in we talk about strategy so we're our first um, uh, our, our first pitch or not pitch what's the word uh, introductory uh, meeting well, no, no we, we do the introductory meeting but but our first oh, um, once they become a client presentation to the client yeah is actually no product yeah no it's actually yeah we, we do a, a PowerPoint presentation we go through it and it's totally about structure and we'll say, here's where you currently are, and name the fund or, or name the institution or whatever. Oh, so you do it? You do and a then we specific go, presentation based on their current situation. strategy. Oh. Strategy only, saying this is what we believe. So you create a unique PowerPoint presentation for their first meeting once they become a client. So yeah, to to onboard them. So That's this awesome. is so we say we meet up. We it's yeah, fact find getting it all onboarding. getting it all involved. We get all the information. We go away, work through it. Yeah, and instead of going. 
straight to SOA. Here's the SOA. We come and meet and go, great, this is what we're thinking. Here's our strategy. This is, we want A plus B. This is, we, we think you should stay in that fund. We should think you should move. These are the insurances. Here's your cash flow. This is the projections. This is where you're going. This is what. So it, it depends on the circumstances, obviously. Obviously. But, but and, and, you know, the, the, the place where they are, the, the product they're in will be there. But then we'll say there's A, B, and C, and they'll be blacked out, but these will be the options, right? And, and they'll be real because wow. we've done the, the stuff. And going and saying, well... That's a really good... This is a real, I, well, I, and, I would enjoy that if well, I was I a I, Look, there's two... There's two it's, it's, it actually builds confidence. It builds... It's mm. a process, right? And these are, these are our sort of bigger clients who we want to sure. have as ongoing clients. But yes. the side there is that we also... We're not going and doing an SOA... Unless we actually have buy-in from the client saying, yes, uh, 100%. Yeah, the SOA is such a weird thing, right? Like, you, you have a meeting, you find out where their current situation is, um, and then really every advisor has a different process between capturing the information and then giving recommendations. And I feel that the more planning that goes into... And the more structure that goes into that space between gathering information and and production of SOA, the better that is. It's almost like that's where that's where the skill in being an advisor is. So the, it's exactly you know, and and that's it, it's it's about building trust in the process. It's about yeah. really engaging, and you know, you, you're the expert on engagement, mate. Um, <laughs> I learned in, from the in, best. <laughs> engaging with. <laughs> The, and building that relationship, you know, because uh, that's this is what it is. It's a relationship, right? And you're the hub of their financial life in yeah. the future. That's where you, you want to be as an advisor. So if you can split strategy and product, it makes a lot of sense. 100%. This is our strategy. This is how you're going to be better off. So best interest duty, all these things are ticked off by this because I've proven to the client that they're better off in this. Or if they're not, we go, well, then, look, there's, there's probably nothing we can do. Or, or we, you know what I mean? Yes. And along the way, things might, you might not have got to the crux of their goals. Like, it, things drop out of that. They either go, oh, that's fantastic. Or, oh, hang on, what about that? And you go, great, fantastic. Where, how does that work? And, and where, where do you want to go there? Yes. Um, so, you, you, yeah, it, it's a midpoint. And it's just something that's naturally fallen into our business just because we're like, well, we're just going to make sure that they want to do this. How do you continue to deliver that high level of... Because one of the things that I struggled with with an advisor is, you know, you put all this effort into the onboarding, the upfront advice, and then as soon as you get to the ongoing, it, it, like how do you continuously or, or do you have a strategy to continuously surprise and delight your clients? Because obviously, like you, if I'm sitting there yep. and I see this bang is powerpoint i'm like super impressed and obviously my trust goes through the roof and i'm loving what's going on i feel like i've I, i've removed all buyer's remorse and i'm loving that i've made this decision three years in do you have something well three, three years in you would have got uh 12 snapshot reports from us right you would have gone to three um annual functions that we run yep. you would have had three annual reviews, minimum yes. meetings that have to happen that sitting in front of, plus you've probably had half a dozen minimum phone calls um, each year. So what's that, another 18? Like, yeah, you've, okay. it, So you're either so you high do, touch you or you're not, right? You, you do a lot of ongoing calls. Well, well, that's what you have to do. Yeah, no, 100%. You've got to check in with your clients. You've got to know your clients. Yes. Know your products, know your clients. Like they're the two th lessons I learned 20 years ago <laughs> and I still believe know your client. Yeah know your client and that's one of the big things that's come out of banking royal commissions and all this sort of stuff is that too many people had clients they don't know right know your client yeah. if they're a high touch ongoing and, and unfortunately this is where advice is going at the moment not not as many people i think mr shipton actually actually said the other day that there's an advice gap forming <laughs> Funny that. who would have thought um but you know it, 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 you've got more and more, you've got to, as an advisor and as an advice firm, you've got to pick the clients, not the other way around. Yeah, no, 100%. What's, so, what, what's up with this uh, going back like a decade and looking at fees that were charged uh, and whether service was produced? Uh, you, 
have you followed any of this? I, I've seen I've seen snippets, you know, people talking about it on the XY group and things like that. Um, it's uh, look, there on? is there is talk about that. Uh, look, uh, and and ASIC, a. Uh, uh, it's it's they're they're really trying to get someone. I I, I and I, I don't understand it. It's it, the rules have changed. You can't yeah. go back. It, yeah, it, and it, I, it seems weird to judge because uh, back in two thousand nine. But okay, but back in two thousand nine, I could pretty much guarantee you that maybe less than ten percent of advisors were even doing something called file notes. Like. <laughs> See, that's a problem for me too because I, I, I... Ten years ago, no well, now, one... That now, wasn't a, it wasn't a requirement. Well, now, now you've got to do a file note about your fact find. <laughs> right, you do a fact find <laughs> and then you've got to do file notes on the back of the fact find. <laughs> Guys, ASIC, sorry if you're listening, the fact find is a file note. It's the most comprehensive... It is the file note. That's what it is. I don't understand why the compliance people... I know you're all... I'm sorry, and I don't understand that there's rules. Right? Yes. Uh, there, you've got to sit down and do... If you have a good fact find, you are writing that. It, that is the fact. That is the file note. Sorry, that's just that drives me insane. <laughs> but, but so going back ten ago, years, there was no file notes by anyone, at least well, as far as I, I know. You, well, look, you, you you took notes. Oh sure, I mean and everyone you, takes notes, but there was no. And there was a trial, and and I I, re- I remember when file right. notes came in in like uh you know started coming in, in like only about eight years ago. And and it was it was this thing. It was like, hey, a file note. Okay, oh, okay. What's a file note? You know, oh, you got to write. You can't just you can't just write what the client wants. You've got to write the time, the date, the location. You've got to write all these. Things. It's like, oh, okay, cool. So a file note. So now, if people are going back to two thousand and nine, what are they expecting to find? What are they it, expecting it, it, to uh, find? It's, it's oh, a- look, and and go back further, and it's even worse. I mean, my first role. <laughs> Uh, was was uh, you know in, in advice and you go back to listen to my first podcast I suppose you'll hear about the history of <laughs> yeah. what I did. Um, but yeah, we had a three page uh, client or C- CAR or something like that. It was called and it was just triplicate and you just it was three pages. You just filled it in and, and that was it. There was one for those one for investments and one for that's the one and, upside I can see to getting rid of all insurance comms. If that does happen, then. All potential conflicts are out the window and SOAs should be able to go down in size. That's not going to happen, though. But it should, don't you think? It like, should, they should if, already. If, yeah, I, absolutely, since, since, um, since commissions have been eradicated from investment and they should already. products. But the last piece is... Uh, so anyway, so that's the, silver, that's the only silver lining I can see is that, that SOAs are blown way out of proportion. D- over-disclosure uh, does not work. Uh, 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 well, from a legal been, point of view and from a client well, point of view. I think, you know, there, there's been, uh, I think ASIC came out the other week or someone's come out and said disclosure, over, doesn't work. disclosure hasn't worked at all and because it's been over disclosed for so long. So here's the thing, because I'm, I'm a part of this FPA working group trying to digitize the, uh, the SOA. Uh, it's and, and to make it sort of. Inc- I think real number. I think the first thing, if you want to do that, is let's not call it an SOA. Really? Let's, let's change the name we were, so that it's a new world. What, anyway, what we were thinking about calling thing. it is incorporation by a statement of advice reference. <laughs> yeah, awesome. That that'll be good for clients. They'll love that. <laughs> so, but but one of the one of the things that's maybe getting you need to, to change that panel. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> what, what, I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. It's actually a really good oh. panel. Um, so one of the things that we're just discussing is the idea of let's say, you know, section one, uh, strategy one. Uh, let's say it has a product recommendation. Then there's a test. So I don't know if you remember, like like a little test, you know, like a like to prove that the client understands what it is that's going on, right? So, so disclosure so, doesn't so work. So, sorry, let's go right to the start then. Do they have to take an IQ test before <laughs> they come into your office? Well, like, well, how mental, far do we take this, mate? Okay, but mental capacity, okay, look, you can't even sign a contract if you, if you, if you don't have a high, you know, high enough IQ. So, I, uh, mo- moving that aside, moving that aside, like, um, if you, if, I don't know if you remember, because you've been trading for a long time, but I remember doing this on Comsec when I wanted to trade options for the first time. I actually had to answer, what is a put? What is a call? What is a long? Yeah, but that's a complex. That, that, sure. That's, that's no, a no, complex no. But I had to prove financial to instrument that you can Comsec. lose more. Oh, yeah. my God. Come on. Advice is the same. So like, I had to prove to Comsec that I understood what was happening before I was allowed to do any of it. I like this idea where if you stick an SOA in front of someone's nose, that 
the, that they have to say da 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 it's like a cpd point like you have to, like you read or consume the content you just have to explain that you understand what what's man i mean if a client <sighs> cannot do this Okay, hear me out, Paul. Hear me out. I'm not suggesting that this is going to make things easier. What so, I'm suggesting- we're all, all again, we're, all we're doing is building bureaucracy around a situation where we're trying to protect a client from an advisor doing the wrong thing. How about advisors don't do the wrong thing? Like, I know yes. there's a simple. How yes. about we trust our advice professionals to be there for their clients doing a great job and getting paid for it. Okay, but like, I'm talking about please. from ASIC's point of view, they're not oh, going to accept look, that. Yeah, but... <sighs> so we have to do something. The, so uh, do you know the thing called the bell curve, yes. right? So, you yes. know, most people in the middle are doing the right thing. There's going to be some exceptional people and there's going to be... And that's going to be applied to every single industry, every single role, every single... I agree. Uh, you know, larger Agreed. In, in this country, accountancy, doctors, lawyers, whatever you say, there's going to be a fringe, okay? Yes. And we need to identify those yes. people as a group and say, hey, maybe you should look at these guys. Yes. You know, where, where does this stop? I mean, I, I was walking down Martin Place this morning. We're in Sydney, by the way, guys. Um, and was handed a, uh, uh, and I won't mention any names, but uh, uh, a, uh, a little flyer, um, you know, putting it out there from this company, you know, invest uh, with Australia's largest, whatever, 8% interest rate. You know, now, um, you know, and... A peer-to-peer lender. So... A $50 sign-up bonus when you invest $200. Right. So, and they're handing that out to people saying, you get 8%. Now, I remember the cycle... Did you get the accompanying SOA IBR with this? No, but there is a small disclaimer saying here, right at the bottom, first thing, capital at risk. Great. (laughs) Read the PDS before investing. So, there's disclosure, right? Wow. So I'm sorry. In a, in an interest rate environment where the you know if you if you're a borrower, fantastic. But if you are a, a, a person trying to eke out a living out of your uh, cash based investments, you are struggling right now. Oh, All man. of a sudden, this eight percent. Oh, great. Now I've seen this cycle before. Okay, and I've seen these things blow up before too. Now you know I'm I'm not going to say that that's the case now, but my my experience tells me don't believe it when it's not right. Well, P2P, if it's too I, good to be true, it usually is. I mean, is. peer-to-peer lending is a new thing, right? So it's, it's, it's difficult to say that this is going to blow up because this hasn't not. existed before. Exactly. I'm not saying it's blown up, but we've seen... It's not bad. Like it's, uh, I've looked into peer-to-peer uh, lending, I should say, before. Uh, it makes sense from an academic level. I don't, know what the, well, I don't know what the results have been. Yeah, but I mean, these things in the past... They, they, the higher the in, let, let's be honest. The higher the return, the higher the risk on the underneath, right? Let's let's say it. So I got I used to tell my clients the higher the risk, the safer it was. <laughs> oh, Hence, why you're not an advisor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is that I, right, <laughs> mate? What? I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being silly. You are. Um, you are in Portugal. Uh, Portugal, or was it the no Denmark? I don't know. One of these places in Europe just recently uh, produced a. A negative interest rate. Yep. And and I was reading an article on that yesterday, and how insane it is that people are going to get paid money to take out a loan. I mean, if you've got savings of any description and it's costing you money, and, and we're not even talking academically, like as in after inflation, which I think is a fair is a fair thing to do anyway. But literally, imagine putting a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars in a bank. And then it costing you $500 or whatever. But uh, the, uh, I think the thing everyone forgets around this, ver- you know, and, and we are going into, well, we think we're going into un- un- uncharted territory with extreme low interest rates for a long time. However, there has been a country that's done this for a very long time. America? No, Japan. Oh, negative interest rates. Right. So they've been yeah, like that yeah, for yeah. a very long time. But that's been the and, government bonds, right? Well, no, it's been the whole country. Like Even it, the it, banks? Yeah. So Ooh, that, And that's where damn. things have really... Abenomics uh, is so weird. And, and it actually hasn't actually helped Japan in any way. No, it hasn't. You know, the, the, the big... <laughs> The big companies that are coming out of that are, are the life companies, you know, yeah. and they're, they're massive, right? Yes. Uh, and, That's and, weird, hey. Well, well it's, all it, the big Aussie ones are now Japanese. Well, they're because the, the Japanese life companies have, yeah. have, 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 have been able to expand and grow their products and all that in a very low interest rate. So the Neo's cost of money. Integrity, they are smart. 
Just start so, an Aussie. Wait, wait three, four years, get acquired. Thank you very much. I don't think that's their business plan. <laughs> let's but start, let, a, I, 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 let's I, I, start an insurance company right now. Look, I don't think it, I think if you talk to Chris Powell from Integrity, he would say maybe don't because it's pretty tough. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you know, and but good, the, good on them though. Well, mate, they, and they're coming out with some unique products. I was telling you about yeah, one earlier yeah, before yeah, we started yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Five Plus, you know, which is a group yeah. policy, which. It's very interesting, very different, and that's what we need in that space. We need it in every space. You and, know? and and you mentioned that's a group policy, and you're big into the group, hence why you're the CEO of the WSA. Um, one thing that I've always found interesting about uh, you, Paul, is like you do have that specialist sort of understanding of the group style of advice. Obviously, you're an individual advisor as well, and you handle your own clients, but you've got like this really big insight into uh, group advice and that kind of stuff. What we, you... we call it workplace. Workplace. Work, workplace. Yeah. Work, work. It, well, it's the old corporate super sort yeah, of yeah, specialist, yeah. So, right? And like, now it's workplace super. Walk, it's workplace walk, walk advice. Us, you just had your AGM. Walk us through what, what's the big thing that's happening in, in workplace. Well, look, it's super. tough. Mate, that, that space, if you, if you talk about advisors who've been uh, sent to the wall, mm. so to speak, that is the sector that's been hurt the most. Um, it's also the sector that did the most advice. Now, whether that was uh, subsidised, cross-subsidised, you know, and that, that's been a big challenge in this industry where someone's paying for someone else to receive something, you know. In insurance. That, in, well, well, insurance and, you know, even in the old corporate super, yeah. um, you know, you, you, the advisor used to get a, a percentage of trial on, on the whole book. Yes. Uh, the FUM, and they used to get a percentage of trial on the uh, insurance, yes. group insurance book. It wasn't as lucrative, obviously, a percentage as you know, direct private clients, but yes. it also, it w- in the past, and then we're talking 10, 15 years ago now, um, the margin was large enough in that to actually have specialists to, that's all they did. They didn't yeah. do advice, right? They yep. just went and did that. They could make a, a living out of doing that, going in and helping the company structure these things, running policy committees, doing, you know, making sure the insurance is right, making sure the, the investments are right really being an expert advisor to the company and introducing them to uh, the product provider. So they were the, the tie-in in the middle. Yes. And received a, a, a commission. So it's like a, a, a selling an insurance policy on, yeah, on yeah, steroids, yeah. you know. Yes. Um, covering a lot of lies. And that, that group specialist piece is really tough because it's, you know, there's a lot of variables depending on... But all on, the money's been stripped out of it now, right? Well, look, yeah, so trailing commissions on uh on uh on the insurance within group was was taken out under fofa yep and then the percentage of farm was uh, uh was grandfathered and then it's also been changed and, and taken out now and so, um I, so now it's turned into a flat dollar fee per right. person that's paid by some uh institutions not by not by many yeah um, right oh, so, so, so it's paid by the employer is it look the new model, and it's sort of like advice, right? In the yep. past, you know, you'd go and see a client, private client, and the client wouldn't really have to pay anything, right? You'd get it all, you'd put a percentage of trail on, on, on the yes. farm and, and yes. insurance. Now, you can't do that, so you pay, they pay an upfront fee. Yep. And this is sort of where the, the workplace um, yep. is going. And it's a different, it's a different situation, right? Um, it, it's, it's, you can't, it's a you can't just go in and look after the company now. You've got to look after the people. Yes. And be in there uh, that way. So it, it's... But there, there, there's, there's specialist firms. So there was probably 500 firms in Australia. Wow. Who That's not many. In, well, firms, yeah. not advisors. Oh, okay. right, firms right, right, right. Yep. in the past. So mm-hmm. 10 years ago, there probably were 500 firms who received some sort of group payment, okay, right. from, from the major product providers, you know, we all know their names, um, they, to, and individual advisors or, or, or businesses, at least 500. I would say now there's 50 firms who wow. specialise in this space, right, yeah, right. who provide uh, services to uh, companies, you know, a large employers, small employers, services to help their people and it, it's become it's and 
I suppose I was always in that space in in the in my last role. That's what we do. It was a staff benefit, and I've always seen it as a staff benefit. Turning that in, you know, making yeah. sure that super insurances and all the other bits and pieces that come with um, a corporate's financial world become a staff benefit, yes. as opposed to just worrying about their super. So now you've got to do that. That's that's really what these firms specialise in. Everyone's got different models, you know, from financial education, literacy, one-on-one meetings. Um, yep talking about the group insurances you know and, and as that integrity you sort of come in with some great products and, and there's some you know a lot of established players who who do that as well um but to, making sure it is a staff benefit because the benefits to a company are massive um you know the the loss of productivity from your people being you know if, if you're an employer your people being in financial stress is huge right mm. so a lot of companies focus on well-being, you know, and have gyms and and all that sort of thing, but they're treating the the, the outcome of stress. They're not they're not treating the, the source of the stress, right? Well, so I just want to touch on the uh, the remuneration model because um, what what really what bothers me is not so much rules changing moving forward; it's the rules changing retrospectively. So. Um, I'm. I'm actually. I, I, I was. I. I probably stand. Uh, I'm not sure how many people agree with me here, but I was a big fan of FOFA in that all commissions were removed from super and uh, investment moving forward. But everything that had happened beforehand was. I mean, we called it grandfathered, but really it was just living up to the contract and the environment in which it engaged in. And I felt that was a. That was a smart move because it then set in motion the change of the, that the industry needed and it still gave uh, the people who operated under that environment a chance to catch up over a long period of time. I've, what happened with group was quite drastic. Brutal and no grandfathering, just out. Yeah. And so... Mal- the Malachi crunch, I'm calling it. The, what's Malachi? I... Uh, Oh, yeah, I'm a bit older than you, aren't you? Just. Happy Days. Have you ever watched Happy Days? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Who's Malachi? I know Fonzie. I remember when Fonzie was in the, uh, in the car rally, the, 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 the oh. bash him up car rally, and oh. it had the Malachi brothers, right? Oh, my God. And he had to save Pinky Dus- Cus- Tuscadero <laughs> from, from the Malachi brothers. And what they did was they, they disabled a car, and then they'd come and smash it from both sides. And that's what's happening with, with corporate super advisors at the moment. They're getting the Malachi crunch. <laughs> Go back and see your happy days. <laughs> it's, that's, uh, a, that's a really good Well, it is footy. because the, 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 the two things here are on one side, and this goes further than just uh, FOFA. This is also companies like Colonial First State just deciding after advisors built their, their so, client pace up, they just cut these payments to so, I mean, cut you, them. You, you've right? made my point for me. So uh, is there a class action? Is, is, I mean, should there be a class action? Uh, the... <laughs> With the CBA, uh, I think the CBA. Um, oh, look, I probably because don't want to comment no, around no, no, that no, at fair, this stage. Fair I, I, yeah, um, I, pro- I probably shouldn't put you on the spot. No, like not with that one, and, I, and I'll say that because um, it, it's it's it, that's a tough situation, right? Should there be a class action? Well, we're talking not many advisors who have all of a sudden lost a large amount of their income um, so here's some things i've learned so, and you probably know all this but for, for the listeners that don't uh didn't listen to my interview with neil mcdonald the uh amp financial planning association CEO, so yeah. he he walked me through um and what i found quite interesting was there are companies out there that will look at something like this as an impossible like as an investment so they will fund yeah. Right, the legal case because they think there's an X percent chance of it being successful. So, but think about the, the vast sums of money we're talking about with the AMP situation is very different than than thirty advisors. So it, it's a different but it's scale. huge amounts of money, though. Yeah, look, um, well, potentially huge amounts of money for, for the AMP situation. Not so much in this one. Fair and, and but but those amounts of money to our members were were extremely important. And, yeah, uh, and and they built their. Uh, their their businesses around a model that was 
propagated okay at that time. Propagated for 30 years, right? So there's been the government that's changed things, you know, ASIC that's changed things, and then individual companies have changed their views on this. And they're saying it's on the back of the, the Royal Commission. Yeah. Um, I think if you look at the CBA situation, I mean, they've just cleaned the decks with everything and this was an unintended... Not, not in a, a, an intended consequence, but we sort of don't take it personally. This is the WWSA... Sure. It, it's situation, but that, they haven't attacked us. It's just part of a, a wider piece of work from the CBA, basically getting out of wealth and, and advice. I mean, and, and yeah. look at what they did with Count Plus and you know, Finwiz and you know. Yeah. So there, there's there's a, this banks exiting advice very fast um, as as you know, and, and trying to. Yeah, because reduce like, their mit, I'm their a risk. massive fan of the positive evolution of financial advice. Obviously. And uh, I'm willing to see whatever needs to happen, happen, but just give it some time. Don't well, no mariachi. Was it the mariachi crunch? Malachi crunch. Malachi. Well, uh, yeah. And you the other side here. Malachi crunching. The other side, that's one side. And the other side is we're, we're in a business cycle where all of a sudden you're going to a company who, and let's look, whilst everyone's, you know, the government will say Australia is doing great at the moment, I, you know, I, all evidence to the contrary at the moment. Um, so, you know, and without our immigration policy, I firmly believe Australia would be in in a in a very very bad situation at the moment, and our GDP well, would be negative, right? We so we would the, be in recession. We are the also. perpetual lucky country. Well, yeah, but it's based on immigration at the moment, which bumps up that that figure. Uh, otherwise, I firmly, you know, believe we'd be in recession. And the economists out there can can talk to me about that and change it around but so you know so when you are dealing with companies so as an advisor in or a wwsa member advisor um you're going to a company saying all of a sudden right you know that fee that used to be taken out of the super fund and used to pay for my services now i need you to pay that for your employees even though you didn't have to before it was subsidized and, and all that sort of stuff um and uh, yeah, and the benefit will go to the employees that uh, at the back end, and then you're going to have to pay for our services to do this. Um, and the employer's saying, "Well, okay." Um, There's no. already a payroll tax. Why why can't it come out of the payroll tax? Well, I I, I, I know you guys are hell bent on tax deductibility for everything, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I, look, some employers see the benefit of it, and they're doing that. Um, some go, look. Guys, come back next year. You know, it's we're, we're going through some tough times at the moment. Um, you know, retail sales are down. Like it's it's a tough business environment at the moment. So going to yeah. a, a company and saying you need to spend more money um, mm. is tough. Turning around that, and this is current clients who you've had ten. You know, and, and I'm talking about our members, ten, fifteen years, if if not more. Um, Relation. I've got one member who has, you know, shut his doors. He had a relationship with a very, very large employer for 30 years and they changed their... And he's had to go and say, I'm doing this, it's going to cost more. And he, they went, no, nah, nah. sorry, mate, we're out. 30-year um, relationship, very large employer, did some amazing work for a lot of people over the years. You know, take, and, and remember, this, this, is, this just isn't basic work, it's... You know, what about when an employee goes on claim? You know, what what happens? Something something happens within the workplace. Something happens to them. They need to claim on the insurance policy. Who does it? Not the HR person. They don't have the capabilities to do this. That's usually where it goes. The insurer says, "Yeah, send us the forms." Where where the the, the people that take t- add the personal touch and take people through this process? And and I can tell you so many stories of the good that. I know I've done in the past and, and, and so many of our members um, have, you know, and they've put that policy in place for a certain reason. It happens. It makes you know, a, a tough time much better. And, and you can't put a price on that. But that's what you get paid for, you know, not just for saying, running a policy committee and saying, yeah, your default insurance is or your default investment's right. I mean, it's a lot more than that and taking people through that process. So... I'm very passionate about it, but at the moment, we're, yeah, our, our members are, are, are struggling and just trying to rebuild their business models beyond you know, their personal financial advice businesses as well. So, so, yeah, we had our AGM yesterday. There's a lot of great stuff coming. We're, we're trying to re... Well, I, I feel like we've 
reach the the bottom of the the cycle i suppose in this space and we're getting the, the advisors we have as members um are the experts and are passionate about this industry they want to stay in this sector yeah um and the the, the beautiful thing there i suppose is the 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 providers understand that as well and they're starting to really come to us and saying we we need you to be strong when we're going to support you in that really so yeah yeah so that's been good um so yeah the likes of and uh, you know it's it's the amps and and bt iwf mlc integrity life um that they've been the ones that have, have stood stood by us um, that's awesome to hear in their corporate super areas because they know They've got employers who need their help, right? And, and they, they, they might have a direct relationship with a BT or an A&P, or, but the advisor comes in and really, they're the, ex, the subject matter experts from an advice point of view. And again, we, you know, we go back to that earlier conversation, what is advice? Advice is the, not the product. The yeah. product's there. The advice is the strategy. Yes. Advice is, is the, the, the people. Uh, advice is the heart of... Of, of what you do you know adding that heart not the mind um, and, and and speaking on that so you started your uh, your financial planning business a couple of years ago now um, as One Direction were no no, sort no, of, not, no oh, yeah. Yeah, as, one, as One Direction would stop using the name then you thought actually I'll, I'll take that I look like those blokes uh, I'll just change, I'll pivot a little bit and call it True Direction <laughs> I, I I haven't got dad dodgy swallow tats like Harry Styles, have I? Exactly. <laughs> nothing, nothing. I just don't understand those those tats. Sorry. No, um, no, no. Is, is, but is it look, yeah, well, mean? it's true direction, mate. Not one direction. Let's get that right. And it's true direction. And you know what? It was about Kath and I finding our true direction. To be honest, we've worked together for yeah, so long. I do actually like the the about us page on your website. It's very good. And, and that's what it is. It's about our true direction yeah. and about why we're in advice and that passion uh, piece and and helping people and. You know, we all say this, I'm, I do it to help people. Uh, there's no better payoff for me mm. than when you see someone get it. You know, when you've put that strategy in place, when you're doing that middle meeting and they go, oh, yeah, oh, y- yeah, oh, wow, yeah. great, yes, I want to do that. Yeah, it's the best. Thank hey. you so how much. Good, how good are the outcomes? I, I, I was such an, because I'm an outcomes-driven person, I always... So I, I wasn't like the best at handholding and communication with my clients. And I felt like I definitely could have improved on that. But like one thing that I always really focused on was making sure I knew exactly what they wanted and then we were going to hit it. And um, I was pretty good at that. And it was so good to bring clients in and be like, hey, you know how we wanted to do this, 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 and this? We're done. We Look, and that's that, one of them. It depends the on it depends on your client, right? And and you're very much like that, so you're going to want yeah, exactly. people like that. I, I, and I had for a me, lot of people from finance, so they kind yeah. of operated in that. Just tell me what to do, give me accountability, put the structure in place, and force it. And and that was I, I really enjoyed working with those people. And and just the realization that they're like oh wow i understand my life and i understand where i'm going and that's and, and here's the things that i wanted to achieve and here's the things that, that have been achieved that was unlike any job ever that and, was and i think so for cool. me yeah that's that's the piece for me that that um when you see them feeling comfortable about their financial life when you see them go oh great okay yeah. i'm being taken care of and we've got different clients in different places some say how have i done this year and i know they're just talking about the return on their super fund i'm like yeah, that's such a small part of that your overall life mm. but uh, you know we'll say well i've got no control about that you're in the right asset mix and here, here's where it is yes but for me it's it's highlighting the other pieces well remember when you came to me and you didn't know where you spent your money yeah how's that going for you now oh i mean i'm in control yes i think that's what we aim to give people we we want to put them in control of their own financial life and yes. that's just taking a few simple steps that they don't know how to do we take them through that you know you know just like you i'm so passionate about doing cash flows with, with yeah. clients that's the crux of what we do unless so you well, unless you do that you don't actually know yeah, hundred percent. It's so, crazy that it hasn't been standard for ages. But well, I guess just, it just gives you. It's because you no product find. provider could make a commission from it. It's no product. There was no, you know, besides a bank charging a five dollar 
bloody fee on an account. There was no money to be made from, an, from well, a product. So it was never pushed to advisors. But, but advisors, you, there's so much value there to add. Well, beyond that, I mean, and, and you want to put a, why would you do it? Just from a compliance point of view. It proves everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Why are you putting them into an insurance policy? Well, yeah. how, how do you justify your basis of advice? Well, here it is. Yeah. That's why that, this is the crux. That's the building block of your life, yeah. your cash flow. It's just like any business. What a, if you're an analyst coming in, looking at a, a company saying, am I going to buy it or not? They go straight to the, the P&L. They go to the, the, the balance sheet. Yeah. That's the cash flow. What's going on here? That, is this a viable business or not? exactly the same with people's finances exactly the same and and every one of our ongoing clients we know their cash flow we've done that with them you know and 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 not in a way just so we know it's a teaching we teach them we show them strategy structure you know that produces a better outcome than anything you know you get the right because we all know a lot of people don't really want to deal with their finances. You know? No, they of course don't. not. Right? They don't. They want and, to outsource and, it. And you, you, you get a client and you go, why well, have you got this structure? And it's just sort of fallen, how it's fallen over the years. You yeah. know? And they just don't change it because it's easier not to or they don't know, they don't, want to, they don't want to mess it up. Yes. So, But if you can go, okay, here's a better strategy and then you don't have to worry about it. This is what's happened. Here's, you spend that money, you spend that money. The rest is going away for your longer term, blah, blah, blah. I mean preaching to referred it here but yeah it, putting that structure in place is is imperative and for me when the clients come back in you know well i know i don't have to worry because i know i've got the right structure and if anything happens they're on the phone because they know that that's part of the the service and whether it's a corporate or whether it's a an individual they call we promote that you, we're available to you anytime i've got one client who was with another advisor <laughs> he could never get in touch I make it my <laughs> mission to call him once a month. Yeah, mad. He goes, what, what, what are you calling for? I'm just check in, mate. It's like, <laughs> how do I get this service? I'm like, this is what it is. You asked me to do this. this is what we do. And he, yeah. nothing's changed. He's, you know, and he's, he's a great guy, but it's, I, I love that. When he, oh my God, this is fantastic. <laughs> right, and it's just a call just to check in. Has it, anything changed? Honestly, you know? yeah. Like considering how much shit advice is going through at the moment on, a, on an industry level, the good stuff with the clients just is never going to go away. You know, it's ne- like the, it, it's, it's, a, it's a career of ups and downs when you've got your own financial planning practice. And, and the downs really are coming from every direction, but the good is so enjoyable it is look and i just hope that we can get to a stage where we know what it's going to look like in the future so that we can start building totally. businesses right i uh, i was on the phone yesterday so obviously i worked at money wise global for a long time which is part of flight center um so i i knew you know, I know a lot of travel agents and I, a guy used to work for me um wasn't a travel agent and then he he ran my home loans business for a while and he's actually set up his own uh, travel agency, right? Oh, wow. His own travel company. It's just him at the moment. And I had a good chat with him yesterday and uh, I'm saying, how's it going? He's going, it's building and going okay. He's going, where I'd like to go, you know, is, you know, 10, 15, up to maybe 50 agents working for me, you know, mobile agents working for me. Um, it's called Mind Body Travel. It's, you know, and he's really got a good little, good little U- uh, USP and CVP and, you know, and I was like, mate, that sounds great. You know, it's great that you can actually plan yeah. to build a business and to grow a business. And he knows it's going to take time and he's putting the effort into it. And, you know, just, but he can plan yeah. five, 10 years forward. It's hard. Can, can any advisor no. listening right now plan five years forward? It's difficult. I, guess, I mean, I guess you could if you weren't receiving a dollar of commission and if you had high net worth, uh, uh, clients that were all paying flat fees um, and you worked in a small to medium sized licensee where the uh, you know the fees were you know maybe like already you're already paying say 60 or 70 thousand per advisor and you and you got that budgeted that's Seriously, a very I, small I, amount I, of people. I don't think yeah I don't think that exists well maybe it does but even then the rules may change you know what the the whether whether compliance is going higher or lower like you know, phasia like if that thing Unspec- comes in from one January, w- really you know we're all is there any a- is there anyone trying to like manage this 
for, for advisors in, in terms of all these expectations that are coming in in a couple of months? Is, is, is so, so the government put a press release out um, with... Well, so as I was saying earlier, the industry bodies were, were putting a code monitoring body together. They actually did a whole lot of work. What's and, and even a code monitoring body? Well, what? so you've got the code of ethics. Yes. Then you actually have to have a body monitoring it to make sure. So the police around right. the rules, right? You've got the rule book and then you need the police for the rule book, right? Right. This seems so, really rushed. It is. Welcome to Phasia. Um, <laughs> without any thought to the future or un- unintended consequences. Right. So the, the, the industry, like I was saying earlier, put, w- put a lot of effort into actually coming in with a, a code monitoring body to say, we'll police it. That's fine. And bipartisan, you know, AFA, FPA, shareholders. So, like, there was a, I, I could tell you who they are, but um, the, the upshot was the government threw that out and said, no, Mr. Hain said that it should be, that should be a government body, so we're going to do that. Okay. But what we're going to say is we're going to start consulting on that. Now, remember, it's less than 50 days until this comes in, right, on 1 January in its current form. Wait a second. Don't tell me it's less than 50 days till the end of the year. No. November, December, that's 60, 65, 65. Close enough. <laughs> it's close enough, yeah. <laughs> Eight weeks till Christmas. Yeah, give it a So yeah. there you go. Might be out a little bit. <laughs> but so within that time frame, what they've said, they've gone, okay, well, the code's going to come in, so we're, we're going to say it's going to launch one right. January, right? right? However, we're going to build a code monitoring body probably maybe 2021, hopefully, maybe 2022. And what we're going to say is you really should follow this. But uh, we're probably it's probably going to take three years to really implement it. Okay, so, okay. Let, let, let's rubber hits the road. Are you allowed to receive insurance commissions as of first of January twenty twenty? Don't ask me, mate. <laughs> Does any- what are you asking me for? <laughs> Who knows? Like, but here's the thing. Yes, I, I look. And from one January, uh, the so you've got uh, the LIF. Yeah, but what's right? What's- which goes down to sixty and sixty. Uh, 60% yes, yes, of 20. Yes. Yep, yep. That's the government mandated step down. Yes, the hybrid. Ongoing. Hybrid. Yeah, yeah. So that's 1 January as well. So yes. this is... So the okay. Phasia's so, saying... <laughs> so is LAF you or is it Phasia? Well, Which that's the thing, mate. To? Who knows? Surely the product... Surely well, the like, pro- what I will say is Phasia is a code. It's not law. Okay. Right? But, but are they, are, can you get sued by this body? I don't know. <laughs> I doubt any law in the land would uphold anything at the moment. Right. Because really, at the end of the day, what what you need to what a lawyer would say. I'm not a lawyer. What a yes. lawyer would say. Well, what's the law, and totally. what's the proof in terms of so corporations law. Yep. And LIF is legislation, isn't it? I don't know. Um, so yeah, the, uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, so that would supersede what this current body says. Right. However. One January, uh, and this is this is the whole issue, right? There's been no consultation. We need some with, answers with anyone. Who who and would the, I go to for answers? Who could give me like real clear, solid answers? And I want to just ask them. Uh, no one. <laughs> <laughs> no, who? <laughs> Mr. Shipton at ASIC. Jane Hume, I need the minister ma- for <clears throat> the minister. The minister really guides what's going on there. However, um, I, I don't answers. know. She's quite new to the role and um, understands the industry. But uh, again, I'm not sure what's going on there. Josh Frydenberg is uh, hell bent on um, cleaning up banking, uh, regardless of the consequences. Grandfathering, in, and I know you. The end of grandfathering is is nigh. Okay. Yeah. Is every single person who's currently paying grandfathered, are they going to be better off? Are they that, going to that, get the rebate? The, the assumption... Or is the product well, just going to receive that it? Was, that was exactly right. You know, they're, they're, and, and they That's said they it. were going to watch this, right? Yeah. So let's talk about someone who's in an allocated pension. Yeah. Who is locked into that allocated pension because it's pre-2015. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, and if they if they move out of that product, uh, they, they, yeah, they're worse off. They will get they yeah, will yeah, get yeah. less Centrelink, right? Yes. So they're stuck in that old product because, but old products are bad. Apparently, every old product's bad. This is brutal. 
every old product the conflicts and the the, the complexity here is <laughs> is beyond the pale and yes look grandfathering moving that out I, I think everyone when when that decision was made i think they thought it would run off a lot quicker than it has but the well, other side is and i know this year run down it was a 40 year i know this for a fact there's been clients who've been called up saying you know we're not you're not going to pay us anymore and Really, it's only been a small... And they're like, no, no, we want to pay you. How do we pay you? Yeah. Because they want oh, that yeah. connection. No, 100%. You know? And I, well, I have to pay it up. For, oh. There's been... So people still want advice and they want it to be subsidised. Not on a large scale. And don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating grandfathering in any way, shape or form. But what I am saying is, why wasn't there proper due diligence put into the decisions that, being, that were being made, including talking to experts who work in this industry, you know, yeah. you Phil Anderson's at the AFA. He knows yeah. more about he's, he's this. So you want to talk, you want to talk to someone with the answers? Talk to Phil Anderson. Yeah, I probably should. Right? He's a good guy. I like that guy. Oh, he, he's phenomenal and, yeah. and uh, of so much value to the industry. And if anyone, yeah, if you want to know about That's the really situation. Good point. Yeah, I think I might actually reach out to him. He, yeah, well, he, he's a great guy and would be very open and he's not afraid of calling it how it is um, and comes at it from a very very understanding level and knows the complexity I mean he was well respected at Zurich before he ever came across so well that Phil Kewen sorry That's Phil Kewen sorry Phil. so Phil Kewen's the CEO sorry yes and Phil Anderson is, the, the, is the, the the the, the uh, yeah the, the, the technical guy the tech guy yes 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 right. and it, well yeah. Kewen I really like Kewen he's a good guy Phil's great <laughs> they both the Phil's are great and 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 uh, you know, and, and on the other side of the FBA, Dante um, yeah. know, knows his stuff as well, and that team there. So, yeah. and the, the beautiful thing is, the last you know eighteen months, that they that those two industry bodies have come together. Yeah, it's um, good. You know, I was at the AFA conference this year, and and there was you know the CEOs of, of uh, so Dante turned up. There was yeah. the, the CEO of the AIFP as well. There, there was a few different. Yeah, I know Glenn James, there. who is uh, the state director of AFA. Uh, he he worked really hard to he I mean he called it United like he really put a lot of effort into trying to to bring I mean he he reached out to X Y um, yeah you guys were down there on yeah 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 thought, so yeah. like it's awesome to sort of get the whole industry I know Ben together. enjoyed himself um, <laughs> I have no doubt <laughs> but um, yeah it, it, but the industry needs to come together um, and I don't know if um, rubbishing the it, the associations is the yeah, right way I, of doing I, it. I think, I think you, it's a brutal tactic. Well, look, there's, there's some USCA or something. I don't know. Just coming out slamming. They're going, how dare Dante get paid four hundred thousand dollars a year when he hasn't done this, this, this? Uh, it's like, well, he's tr- like he is trying. You know what I mean? Do you know how hard it is to engage with government agencies? Oh my god! Like what? What? What do people expect? Like, there's nothing coming out of these government agents. They're trying to work out what they're trying to do as well. So I just don't think that, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think personal attacks work in any way, shape or form. I don't I just, think it's I, a per- I, think I think the that, CEO of the WSA, he needs to get absolutely roasted. You know that poor man guy? Well, come at me, mate. <laughs> do your best. <laughs> I'm just trying to do uh, the best for for, 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 for our members and, and my people, mate. No, so, mate, look, um, I, I make a joke, but uh, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on, mate. That's it's, right. Hopefully that was helpful and a bit of insp- It's always good chatting, mate. That's mate, the best thing. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and, mate, thanks for coming on first time. Uh, you were the first time second uh, podcast yeah, and now you're right. the first time third podcast. So, Paddy, I'm back, mate. <laughs> Hope you're okay with that. <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, mate. Cheers. Thanks, Clive.